to get elect. Thank you. <laughs> Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Ayala. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Cornegie. Aki. Deutsch. Aki. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Amprey Samuel. Present. Thank you. Jonai. Present. Gredenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Eugene. Yeah. Perkins. Presente. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Gibson. Here. Kalos. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Constantinides. Here. Rodriguez. Ayala. Present. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Uh, thank you, uh, and good afternoon, everybody. Again, welcome to the stated meeting of March 13, 2019. This is a, a bit of a different view, uh, so we're all going to get through this together. I didn't bring my list of who supported me or not, so I'm going to treat everybody equally, at least for today. Uh, and now we will have today's invocation, which will be delivered by a pretty phenomenal uh, uh, reverend in the uh, borough of Brooklyn, whom I know very well, Reverend Dr. Shel Anthony of Judah International Christian Center, located at 141 Rogers Avenue in Brooklyn. Well, first, let me say that it is an honor and a privilege to have been asked to deliver the invocation on this afternoon. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah, the God of Rahab, Ruth, Fannie Lou Hamer, 
Rosa Parks, Golda Meyer, Sonia Sotomayor, Ruth Ginsburg, Carlene Rivera, Vanessa Gibson, Anika Ambery Samuels, Karen Klosterwitz, Inez Barron, and Lori Cumbo. We acknowledge the greatness in these women and those little girls yet unborn. We pause, pray, and invoke the presence and power as the city council gathers to conduct the business of your children. We thank you for your grace and mercy that you have extended to us today. Your word says that this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, there are many issues in our city that need attention and care. Thank you for blessing us with these men and women that have been placed in office to do our bidding. Oh Lord, give them the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding needed to bring healing to our city and wholeness to the broken. Let, let them ever be mindful that they represent various communities, Staten Island, the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, and yes, even Brooklyn. But ultimately, it is not the voters that have put them in office, but they have answered your call. Let them not be weary in their well-doing, for they will reap of harvest if they faint not. Teach them to trust in you with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding. If in all their ways they acknowledge you, you promise to direct their path. As we gather to address the business of the city, you handle their business, their families, their finances, their future. Bless their families, keep them day by day. We lift up our city, New York City, up to you. Make us a city that cares for its people, the seniors sharing di diabetic needles because they must choose between food and medication, the homeless, the working family that lost their home and now live in the shelter, the young man who can't find employment and thinks nobody cares and contemplates homicide and suicide, for the teenager who's still struggling to find his place in the world. Meet every need according to your riches and glory, and we will continue to honor and reverence you. We pray this prayer in the name of the teacher, the rabbi, the prophet, the Messiah, and the king. God bless this city council, God bless New York City, and God bless America. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Anthony, and uh, for the prayer and for all the work that you do throughout the city. I'd like to call on Councilmember Carnegie to spread the invocation on the record. Good afternoon. Um, before I read my prepared remarks, I want to say thank you, Dr. Anthony, for providing me and so many like me with comfort and support uh, through phone calls and attending your church services. Uh, but I just want to make sure that I did not mistakenly hear you pray only for women. I, I believe that is correct. All right, thank you. Thank you. The Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gwen Anthony is an anointed woman of God who has been called into the kingdom to serve her generation through the power of God. She possesses the unique ability of gracefully and skillfully mixing professional ethics, business acumen, political and cultural activism in order to proclaim a living gospel. As an artisan and visionary, Dr. Anthony is the founder, CEO, and pastor of the renowned and awarded Judah International Christian Center in Brooklyn, New York. Established in 1996, Judah and Reverend Dr. Anthony are celebrating 20 years of victorious ministry. A 30-year veteran committed to human and community development, Dr. Anthony and Judah have been nationally recognized by former President Bill Clinton as well as President George Bush as a progressive and cutting-edge leader and outstanding organization in the faith-based community addressing holistic faith-based development and empowerment. An energetic leader of this diverse and multifaceted urban community ministry, Dr. Anthony employs a holistic approach to serving people. This commitment for advancing people is need, in need is translated by her ongoing active service and membership on several wide-ranging national and international boards. A visionary leader, Dr. Anthony is the creative force behind the holistic approach to community wellness program, a nationally faith-based best practice model, which assists religious leaders, government and representatives, and community stakeholders grappling with social challenges. WACW 
has garnered national praise and recognition in both media and national forums, including ABC's This Week with Sam Donaldson and George Stephanopoulos. The New York Times Congressional Quarterly, the cover story of City Limits Magazine, the White House Empowerment Conference, and the New York State Governor's Dr. King Interfaith Summit. Dr. Anthony has earned two master's degrees in theology and religious education, as well as a doctoral degree in sacred theology. She is an alumnus of Harvard University Divinity School Leadership Institute and Cornell University. Family Development Train the Trainer, DCYD. Dr. Anthony is a much sought after preacher, keynote speaker, consultant, and ecumenical liaison. She's a proud mother of two sons, Keon Anthony and Kayan Zaire, and grandmother of five darling girls, Tiffany, Diamond, Alicia, Adia, and Kamora, and grandson, Keon Anthony Shepherd II. Thank you so much, Dr. Anthony. I'd like to spread it, this uh, invocation on the record. Thank you. Uh, now we have the adoption of minutes by Councilmember Drum. Thank you. I have a motion to uh, spread the minutes of the stated meeting of January 24, 2019, be adopted and printed. Message and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from the city, county, and borough offices? <clears throat> Excuse me. M144 and M145, New York City Comptroller reports. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M146. Uh, thank you. And at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. We are just voting on land use call-ups. Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Permission to vote on all land use call-ups and general orders? Permission granted? Aye. King. Permission to vote on all call-up and all items on general order calendar today? Permission granted? I vote aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Oh. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Cumbo. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. All right, and uh, we'll now have communication from the speaker, but first, I know there's been a lot of confusion, so I just want to confirm that you are the speaker of the city council. <laughs> I am still the speaker and the acting public advocate. Thank you, public advocate-elect. No problem, thank Thanks you. for being here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being with us this Wednesday. We have a busy agenda ahead of us. Before we begin, I'd like to remember some of those that we've lost in the last couple of weeks since our last stated meeting. 27-year-old Ganu Gandanao was taken from us earlier this month. Ganu was a four-hour vehicle driver, and he was out picking up a late fare in the Bronx 
when he was stabbed to death. This act of violence breaks my heart and I know it breaks the city's heart. And we are sending our love and support to his friends and to his wife and his two-year-old son during this painful time. I also want to acknowledge the passing of labor leader Kevin Lynch. Kevin committed his life to the labor movement and fought tirelessly for working women and men in New York City. Kevin leaves behind his wife, Queen Supreme Court Justice Bernice Siegel, and his daughters, Rebecca and Sarah Lynch. Since our last dated meeting, <clears throat> we have lost three more 9-11 first responders to illnesses they developed from serving down at the pile. We lost paramedic Lissandro Rijos, who was with NYU Downtown Hospital on 9-11. We lost police officer Kevin Birdie Joyce from the 52nd Precinct. And we lost East Hampton Marine Patrol member Frank Kennedy. The entire city, myself included, will be forever grateful to these men for their bravery and service. It's important to remember them and the sacrifices they made and that we keep their families and loved ones in our hearts. I continue to urge Congress to take action to honor the heroes who served our city in the aftermath of 9-11 by fully funding the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. And I ask that we now take a moment of silence in honor of Ganu Gandanao, Kevin Lynch, Lissandro Rios, Officer Kevin Joyce, and Frank Kennedy. Thank you. Before we start on today's agenda, I want to make note that uh, today is our first meeting in women's history, or we should say history month. The New York City Council is such a strong body because of the women who are on this council. To the impressive and inspiring members of the Women's Caucus and also the brilliant and hardworking women on all of our staffs, I would like to say thank you and acknowledge the vital role that you all play here in this council and throughout our, our city. Recognizing the accomplishments and contributions of women is important, and for far too long, this city has failed in doing so, and we are changing that at City Hall. We need more women in this body, but we are changing that on the walls of City Hall. To kick off Women's History Month, we unveiled eight new portraits of history-making women that now hang on the walls, downstairs, on the council side of City Hall. These trailblazing women, Antonia Petoja, Dorothy Lee, Shirley Chisholm, Beverly Sills, Zora Neale Hurston, Frances Perkins, Alice Austin, and Dorothy Day will hold their rightful place on our walls as part of our history. There is still so much of Women's History Month we have left to celebrate, and I'm excited for the council celebration tomorrow evening, and I'm excited to see what the women of this body will continue to accomplish in the days, months, and years to come. Uh, so I want to thank you all, and I want to give a big round of applause for the women who are on the council and the women who work here at the City Council for Women's History Month. Uh, it was said earlier, but it's important to say again, I have one last shout out before we start today's stated meeting. As everyone can see, uh, our colleague and public advocate elect Jumani Williams is in the big chair today. Uh, Jumani, I said it at the last stated meeting, and I'll say it again, you're going to be a powerful voice <clears throat> for New Yorkers as public advocate, and I can't wait to continue to work with you. Uh, look at you up there, Jumani. You look good up there on that dais. The Captain America chair really suits you as public advocate elect. So congratulations. Now let's dive into today's agenda. The council will vote on the following land use items. Douglaston Parkway rezoning will facilitate uh, two 
uh, developments resulting in affordable housing units in Councilmember Vallone's district. We'll vote to approve 570 Fulton Street and Majority Leader Cumbo's district. The Council will vote on Williams Bridge rezoning in Councilmember Mark Joni's district. And we'll vote on Betances V1, a NYCHA application in Councilmember Diana Ayala's district for a 15-story mixed-use building and 100, 100 affordable housing units. Uh, the Council will vote on the following property tax exemptions, 6769 St. Nicholas Avenue in Councilmember Perkins' district, 3234 Putnam Cluster in Majority Leader Cumbo and Councilmember Cornegie's districts, and East Village Homes in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district. The Council will vote on a home rule message sponsored by Councilmember and Chair of our State and Federal Relations Committee, Councilmember Andy Cohen, which will authorize the state legislature to pass a bill that will allow the city to deploy up to 750 speed limit enforcement cameras in school safety zones across the city. Speed cameras have been shown to significantly slow vehicular speeds and save lives. The bill would improve the city's ability to collect vines for speed zone violations. You all know that last summer when the state legislature adjourned and did not act on expanding the speed camera program. The city council stepped in and working with the de Blasio administration and Governor Cuomo to enact a bill that would ensure that the speed cameras would be turned on before the first day of school. I am proud the council took action on that and I want to thank, as I always do, and pay tribute to the women and men of Families for Safe Streets who are here today, who have been uh, the real advocates pushing for this and fighting for this. They're here with us today in the balcony today, some of the leaders, and I want to thank them for their presence as always. It's good to see you all. Thank you for being here. Amy and Mary Beth, and thank you very much, Joan. Thank you all. Debbie, thank you all very much. Uh, moving on, the council will vote on the following legislation. <clears throat> Introduction 877, sponsored by council member Robert Cornegie, would require certain city agencies to provide materials regarding lead hazards, including information on how to obtain a blood lead screening to the parents or guardians of a child under seven years of age when such parents or guardians seek service from certain city agencies. This entire package of bills we're doing today is to strengthen our uh, lead laws in New York City. Introduction 709, sponsored by Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, will require the Department of Environmental Protection to provide online an interactive map with information regarding the known lead water service lines and make best efforts to identify all lead water service lines, including privately owned service lines. It will also require the department to provide information to users about lead contamination prevention, lead water test kits, and how to replace lead service lines. The department must replace any known lead water service line that's owned by the department no later than December 31st, 2025. Introduction 1063, sponsored by Council Member Bob Holden, will require notice be given to the community board or local council member within five business days of discovering or becoming aware of a hazardous level of lead in soil. There was an issue in Council Member Holden's district just before he took office, after he had already been elected. And I also want to say today is his first bill that he's passing as a council member, and I want to congratulate Council Member Holden on passage of this bill today. Great job, Bob. <clears throat> Next, we're looking at Introduction 1117, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, which will require certain city agencies to provide materials describing, among other things, building owners' responsibilities under the city's lead laws. These agencies would also be required to inform parents or guardians when they seek services 
that they can obtain without cost or payment an inspection of their dwelling unit for peeling paint, a deteriorated subservice, or an underlying defect by calling through in one and a lead testing kit for drinking water from the Department of Environmental Protection. We'll vote on the following two bills by Councilmember Danny Drum. Introduction 881 will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to establish an education and outreach program to increase awareness of childhood lead poisoning prevention. And introduction 464, which will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene investigate potential sources of elevated blood lead levels in children, including the inspection of any dwelling where a child with an elevated blood lead level spends more than 10 or more hours per week. This bill would also require building owners to investigate and remediate lead hazards when a child spends 10 or more hours per week in one of their units. Introduction 918, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres, would expand reporting requirements under the city's existing lead laws for the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and the Department of Housing Preservation and Development. This legislation would also strengthen the city's auditing of landlords to ensure compliance with the requirements under the city's lead laws. Introduction 871, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, would require that any testing of water for lead that is required by law include a first draw sample from such source. Introduction 920, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, would extend current requirements for daycares to test for lead paint annually to other facilities with children under the age of six, including preschools, nursery schools, and where applicable elementary schools. And introduction 865, which I sponsored, would reduce the minimum lead threshold the city uses when testing for presence of lead contamination. This has to do with dust and paint. It puts us at the level that federal standards are asking for. And I wanna thank the amazing staff the staff worked really, really, really hard on these bills for almost two years. So I want to thank Tirza Nasser, Megan Chen, Zay Emanuel Hailu, Austin Branford, Samara Swanston, and Nadia Johnson <clears throat> for their incredible work on this. I want to give a big round of applause for the staff for their great work. They're right in the back over there. Thank you all very, very much. We are so lucky to have such incredible staff here at the council, and I want to say before turning it back over to the public advocate, folks should feel, council members should feel very, very proud of this package of bills we're voting on today. For far too long, too many children in New York City have been poisoned by lead, and city agencies have not done the necessary enforcement based off of previous legislation that was passed under then Speaker Gifford Miller Councilmember Perkins was a key leader in passing that legislation when he was in the council in his previous time here. Too many children, predominantly children of color, predominantly in low-income neighborhoods, predominantly in the South Bronx and Upper Manhattan and Central Brooklyn and Southeast Queens, have been poisoned, poisoned, affecting them for the rest of their lives. Behavioral issues, developmental issues, unable to attain their dreams that they have had or their parents have had for them. And today the city council, this package of bills we're passing, is the most expansive, wide-ranging, far-reaching, led legislation in the entire country, in the entire United States of America, this package of bills that we are voting on today. I am sorry that it's taken so long for us to do this, not in this council, but as a city, because so many young people, so many children have suffered, and people think this is just children in NYCHA, when actually 80% of the children that have been poisoned are children that are in private residential buildings in New York City. And so today we are passing laws to be a leader for the city, but to be a leader for the entire country to show what can be done, to show what's possible, to show and hopefully blaze a path for what other municipalities can do to protect children across our country. But make no mistake, this package of bills, while it is an important package, a great package, a groundbreaking package, it is only as good as the enforcement that is done. 
And so the Department of Buildings and the Department of Housing Preservation and Development and the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, these agencies must step up now and must enforce these laws in a stringent and comprehensive way to protect children and their families across New York City. So today is a great day for this body because of the work that all of us have done collectively on this. And today is a great day for the future of children in New York City. I am very proud of all of you that have worked so hard on all of this. I am very proud of the staff who have worked hard on this. And I ask all of us to enthusiastically support this package of bills. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting. I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, public advocate elect Jermani Williams. Please don't forget the elect until next time. <laughs> Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations uh, on this body for the package that it's going to pass. Uh, uh, when I was an early organizer, I believe it was called Local Law 1, uh, was uh, one of the first bills I learned about and really saw it come to fruition from people organizing. So I'm, I'm sorry as well it took this long, but I'm proud that this body is uh, moving forward on this package of legislation. Uh, we will now move into the discussion of general orders. Seeing none, report of special committees. No, excuse me, none. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intros 709A and 1063A, lead water service lines and soil contamination. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, intros 865A through intro 1117A on page three, lead re re excuse me, remediation. Amended and coupled in general orders, and I was remiss, Mr. Clerk, in not acknowledging during my prepared remarks that the chair of our health committee worked very, very hard on this package of bills for a long time, has been a leader on this issue. His district is a district that has seen a disproportionate amount of lead paint poisoning amongst children. He did a fabulous job uh, conducting the hearings and working with all of the colleagues and the staff here on the passage of today's bills. So I wanna thank the chair of our health committee, Mark Levine, for his work on this. And this package under the health committee is amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 464B, Lead-Based Paint Hazards. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 330 and Reso 782 through LU 332 and Reso 784, Douglaston Parkway, Rezoning and St. Nicholas Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU 335 through LU 337, Fulton Street, Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me. LU 342 and Reso 785 through LU 344 and Reso 787 tax exemptions. Couple in general orders. LU 345 and Reso 788 through LU 349 and Reso 790 Williamsbridge Road rezoning and East Village homes. Couple in general orders. LU 350 and 351 Patances V1. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Report of the Committee on State and Federal Legislation, pre-considered SLR 1, speed cameras. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. LU 335 and Reso 791 through LU 351 and Reso 795 approved modifications. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commission of deeds. Coupled on general orders. And at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of technology. Um, 343 and 344, I think those are the numbers for 570 Fulton Street and the accompanying resolutions, 342, 344, 342, 343, and 344, and the accompanying resolutions. I think we heard, heard recently that about 70%, my number might be a little high, of the city lives at or below the median income. And until we can match 
the number of apartments that we are putting online and calling, calling affordable to the number that exists or somewhere close to that, we're not going to address the housing crisis that we are facing. Thank you. Borelli. I and all accept SLR 1. Brannon. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the speaker and my colleague for the strong package of le le legislation. This is a major step um, in really working towards protecting our children. Uh, I know there are more lead bills to come, but this is truly a strong uh, lead, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. With congratulations to the speaker and to all my colleagues on the passage of the bills today, I vote aye on all. Cornegy. Deutsch. Aye on all. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Public Advocate elect. Today I'm taking this opportunity to uh, congratulate you on your election and to let, it, uh, let, let you know that, that I'm too, pretty sure you know that this council uh, in, in the past eliminated a committee called for hire vehicle committee. I used to work uh, fighting for the taxi industry. Maybe you as a public advocate could you should influence because Uber for many years was allowed to function as a black car uh, even though it was a taxi company, the yellow taxi industry was destroyed by uh, a medallion that used to have a value of $1,500, uh, 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 $1.5 million, now just worth $200,000. Nine taxi drivers have taken their life because of the situation in which they were put through for, for many years. I hope that you use your new position to really advocate for the taxi industry and use your influence to bring back that committee. That committee it was a mistake to, to, to eliminate that committee. That committee was functioning, and I'm pretty sure that as a public advocate, you could use your influence and you, you, so to advocate for the taxi industry and bring that committee back. That committee was a good committee, and I think it was a mistake to disband that committee. Thank you, Mr. Pican. I, I vote yes. Thank you. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. With my warmest congratulations to all of our colleagues that led the way and the staff in creating this extremely comprehensive and important package related to lead-based paint. Um, certainly will have a profound impact on my district in the Bronx in protecting families and children. Um, I'm pro so proud to support this measure and certainly New York City being a lead um, in making sure that we continue to protect our families in this city. Congratulations to all of my colleagues and to Chair Levine. Um, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jonai. Gordenchik. I just want to add uh, my voice to that of my colleagues who've spoken already on the lead package um, it is uh, an outrage that we are still dealing with this matter at this date and time. I want to thank the speaker, uh, my colleagues who uh, drew up this legislation, Chair Levine, and all of us today who are voting on this. Uh, the time is way past due, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Baron. Yes, I just want to make a correction. The numbers that I'm voting no on are land use 343. 344, 345, and land use 335, 336, and 337. Thank you. Holden. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the speaker, Speaker Johnson, uh, Councilmember Constantinides, and uh, certainly Mark Levine 
for their leadership on this uh, lead bill, the lead package, and all my colleagues in the city council for the support of the package. Uh, this is my first bill, as the speaker said. Um, and I want to thank my staff and legislative director, especially Daniel Cozina, who led that, and Jeff Baker and the city council staff, including new daddy Jason Goldman on that. Thank you very much. Who? I don't know. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain. Permission granted. Thank you, public advocate elect. Very good to see you up there. Uh, this is uh, really a good day to be in the council for protecting the lives of kids and expanding opportunity for the future of our city. So I just want to give big props to the speaker and Chair Levine and all the sponsors of the lead paint bills and also, of course, say just express enormous gratitude to the Families for Safe Streets leaders who are up in the balcony because quadrupling the number of speed cameras is one more way we are truly going to save the lives of children in this city. Um, and it is because of people like you. I vote aye on all. Mario. No one SLR1, I and the rest. Levin. I want to congratulate all the bill sponsors, um, and I want to thank Families for Safe Streets uh, for all of their tireless advocacy. Um, and a special congratulations to Councilmember Holden for his first bill. And with that, I vote aye on all. Levine. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Public Advocate Elect. Uh, permission to very briefly explain my vote? Very briefly, yes. Uh, okay, <laughs> I promise. I'll, I'll follow your lead on that. I, um, We're in trouble then. We're in trouble. <laughs> we miss you here in the back row, by the way. I, I just want to compliment my colleagues who are passing bills in this sweeping package to protect children from lead poisoning. When we passed landmark legislation in 2004, there was wording in the bill which uh, made a promise to the people of the city um, that we would eradicate this epidemic by the year 2010. And here we are, nine years later, with an average of 4,000 children a year diagnosed with lead poisoning. Uh, we have failed in that promise that we made, and I am glad we're taking a decisive step today towards righting that long, wrong with a sweeping package of bills. And I want to compliment my colleagues who have bills that came to the Health Committee, including, of course, Speaker Johnson, Councilmember Torres, Councilmember Carnegie, Councilmember Drum, Councilmember Combo, Councilmember Borelli, and Councilmember Traeger. And I will be pleased to be voting aye on all. Thank you. Myzel. Menchaca. Aye on all. Miller. I vote aye. Moya. Aye and all. Perkins. Permission to explain my vote. I just want to uh, briefly express my appreciation of this very comprehensive, aggressive, long overdue approach to lead paint poisoning. And so once again, I'm very happy to support this legislation and therefore vote aye on all. Powers. I and all, and I want to congratulate my friend Councilmember Holden on his first bill. I see he's wearing the New York colors today, so congratulate to him. Thanks. Reynoso. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Um, so I want to congratulate my colleagues uh, on this package of bills, and certainly thank the speaker uh, for his leadership on this and. This is one of those days when, when you start to really understand um, how significant the work we do uh, day in and day out is it affects communities. And I was trying to not speak, but felt I had to speak because the damage that has been done to many black and brown, and we need to call it for what it is, black and brown children in this city who will never recover um, from lead, um, hazards is, is significant. Um, also, the need for extensive services for many of these children who've been affected by lead as well is something that we have to continue to monitor and take serious. You know, when you talk about communities who seem to deal with every disparity 
that there is, whether it's in the criminal justice system, um, whether it's a lack of uh, access to healthy foods, but then to compound lead on top of that. Um, you look at the IEP numbers in a lot of our schools and how some of our communities have an overwhelming abundance of those IEPs. That is all a culmination of the environment that seems to be uh, sustained in communities of color. Um, so this, this is very emotional to see this happen with a three-year-old because I, as a parent now, I can understand um, the ramifications that many of these children will have on them for the rest of their lives. So I'm grateful for this council and passing this significant um, package of bills and to all my colleagues who, who led on this. But, you know, God willing, we won't have to be back here again today to ask for a quality of life that uh, many other communities is, uh, have. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Mr. Public Advocate, for all the times that you asked to explain your vote, I'm going to ask to explain my vote. Uh -oh. I was usually pretty quiet, if I remember. My recollection is <laughs> permission granted. Thank you. On behalf of all the youth in New York City, I want to thank uh, my colleagues for this very strong and comprehensive package of bills. And I do so with the hope that this will mitigate the scourge of lead poisoning and that we will no longer have to use resources from um, New York City to serve and to help young people that, uh, that could have avoided this, this unfortunate health hazard. Thank you. And I vote aye. Rosenthal. With congratulations to Councilmember Holden in uh, New York City, Blue and orange, I want to see if he stands up again, and aye on all. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, public advocate-elect. Um, today, uh, we're voting on my legislation, intro 920, that will extend current lead paint testing and remediation requirements for daycare facilities operating in structures erected before January 1st, 1978, to other facilities serving children under six, including preschools, nursery schools, and schools when applicable. Uh, the most common cause of lead poisoning is exposure uh, to lead paint. Uh, my legislation will take common sense regulations about testing and remediation for hazardous lead paint at daycare facilities and apply them to other facilities that serve all children under six, including schools, preschools, and nursery schools. This bill is a measure to help us meet our responsibility to protect the health of every child in our city. We have to make sure that our children are protected from unnecessary and unavoidable harm to their health. I'm proud that, that this legislation is part of the Council's comprehensive approach towards fighting back against lead poisoning. And I thank the Speaker, uh, really, for not just shepherding this through, but pushing back against the pushback that we received over and over again. Uh, Speaker Johnson's leadership was unwavering, and I really do appreciate him and all the sponsors of, of, of all their bills. Uh, I want to also give a shout out and thanks to Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, Laura Popa, uh, Zay Emanuel, Halu. I want to thank my staff and Escape, Vanessa Ogle, and Eric Greenberg as well. And with that, I vote aye and all. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye and all. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, say thank you to Speaker Johnson for his amazing leadership on this lead package, but also uh, on safe streets. Uh, in his State of the City address and with the home rule passing today, uh, he is really leading the way and making sure that our streets are safe for everyone. And I just want to thank him for his courage in taking uh, some very, very strong positions. Uh, with the lead package today, I'm proud to be a part of uh, something that I know we all are proud of, something that's going to dramatically change lives for the better. And our piece of this package, Intro 709, is one that came to me from constituents who uh, wondered if the water their children were drinking in schools and in parks uh, were safe. And 
they helped uh, craft our particular piece of legislation, uh, which is requiring an unprecedented depth and transparency in reporting lead poisoning uh, by creating an interactive map on the city's website to identify all known lead water service lines in New York City, one that's accessible and searchable uh, and would publicly report the locations of all known lead water service lines. People can search based on their address, their zip code, uh, and other identifying uh, notes. And the DEP is also going to be required to engage in outreach to educate the public on lead contamination prevention, uh, lead water test kits, and how to replace lead service lines. Um, so I'm proud of this package, uh, proud of our small piece of it, uh, and I want to thank my staff, Matt Wallace, my chief of staff who's worked on this for quite some time, uh, Jack Bernadovitz, and uh, all of those, and Bob Holden, who has uh, been a real fun colleague to serve with, and I, I really enjoy learning more about him all the time in the hearings and the committees that we share. Congratulations, Councilmember Holden. And I vote aye on all. I'm not sure I said that. Jaeger. Mr. President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Did you say, did you say Mr. President? Yes. <laughs> I'm very formal with the titles. I don't um, know about that, but the permission granted. Was that a yes? Yes, it's permission granted. All right, granted. thank you, sir. Um, uh, it's good to see you up there. Uh, and I will miss you on the, on the border that we share. Um, and my parents have to get a new council member now. Um, but you're looking good up there, and I'm very proud of you. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, I uh, want to congratulate my colleagues, uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, um, and uh, the chairs of the committees, uh, Chairman Constantinides, the committee I'm proud to serve on, uh, Chairs Levine, Carnegie, um, and all the council members who uh, uh, have brought forward these wise measures that will save lives. And uh, it's not hyperbole to say that we will change generations in the future uh, by, these me by these measures that we're passing today. And I'm proud to cast my vote in favor of all of them, uh, eye on all, with the exception of SLR1. Thank you. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Well, uh, congratulations to everyone on the bill today. Special congrats to Councilmember Holden for passing his first bill. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of LUs 343, 344, 345, with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions, and LUs 335, 336, 337, and accompanying resos, which is adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions. And SLR 1, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call up votes are 47 in the affirmative, and zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of the bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. And before I know, Mr. Public Advocate, we get to general discussion. Only one member has signed up for general discussion, which is great. <laughs> so if no one else wants to sign up, no one else wants to sign up, we're gonna, we're gonna hear from that one great member and then hopefully we'll be out of here. So hopefully no one else signs up. Thank you, Mr. No Public pressure. Advocate. No pressure. <laughs> All right, there are no resolutions to be voted on today. We will now move into uh, general discussion. We will begin and maybe end <laughs> with Councilmember Barron. Barron, how did we know? <laughs> uh, thank you. This is Women's History Month. I'm going to be very brief. I just have a list 
of famous black women that I would like to share with you. And of course, being a teacher, I put it in alphabetical order. Now, so you'll notice some of the letters are the first names, others are the last name. Uh, Marian Anderson, Ella Baker, Shirley Chisholm, Ruby D, Murley Evers, Aretha Franklin, Nikki Giovanni, Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, Ida B. Wells, because I couldn't get the eye. Uh, Mae Jameson, Coretta Scott King, Audrey Lord, Winnie Mandela, Queen and Zynga, Michelle Obama, Rosa Parks, Queen Mother Moore, uh, Della Reese, Harriet Tubman, Adwara Lili Ulasia, who's a Nigerian writer, uh, Yanra Van Zant, Ida B. Wells, Betty X, of course, Malcolm X's wife, because I couldn't get the X, Yolanda Adams, and Zora Neale Hurston. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Councilmember Rivera. Oh, oh, hey, everyone. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, it's Women's History Month. I, want, I, I just want to, I just want to take a moment. I just want to take a moment. That's for all y'all that was mean to me just now. That was, that was just for you. So no, I, I realize that what I should do is say permission to explain my vote and then say everything I have to say in general discussion then, and then it's usually accepted. But um, sarcasm aside, I just want to tell everyone that today I was at two different housing rallies. One was for tenants who are uh, first uh, generation, they're immigrants, and they continue to be uh, intimidated and harassed by their landlord. And the other one was along with, with my colleagues about enforcement for tan, uh, stand for tenant safety. And I say all that because we're in a housing crisis, and last stated, I did not stand up for sake of time and talk to a little bit about the, the bills that Keith Powers and I introduced as a, as a package of legislation on broker's fees and on security deposits. So I wanted to ask you all to seriously consider signing on to 1423, 1424, 1431, 32, and 33, and to please help us as we try to address the housing crisis, specifically as it comes to people in the rental market. Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience. Have a great weekend, everyone. That was worth it. That was worth it. Um, I do want to say, as this is my, um, my uh, first uh, stated, it's pretty cool up here, uh, to go from a, a knuckleheaded kid from Brooklyn to a pretty rambunctious council member. I'm excited to be in the Captain Marvel or Captain America chair. And um, I'm just proud to have done it in a way that folks said I could not. Uh, so just thank you uh, to my colleagues, to the speaker, to everyone in the city. Uh, but for posterity, right before we close, uh, I would like to take a selfie. <laughs> we can do it after. I'll come and do it after. All right. We will now call on the speaker to close today's meeting. Uh, the stated meeting of March 13, 2019, is thankfully hereby adjourned.